and welcome to another edition of Building the ELR. In this how-to special we're going to be taking a look at how to build this diorama. And in this first part we're going to be taking a look at the three primary techniques, track laying, ballasting and scenics. We're also going to be taking a look at how to make these trees from scratch. But first a quick chat about the board. Uh, basically the board is whatever size you want to make it, in whatever shape you want to make your diorama. Uh, this particular board is uh, long enough to fit a two car DMU, uh, as you can see I've put cork already down and I've put a strip of cork underneath the track and I've also built up in two separate sections a little bit of cork and that's to add some definition. We're going to be using uh, basically decorators filler uh, mixed to a reasonably stiff consistency. So the first job is to apply to the sections of the cork that I want raised. Uh, so as you can see, if you make it like, if you make it to a consistency of like double cream whipped up, so it's quite firm, you know, and you can spread it around with these. Uh, drying time on this is usually about an hour, so you get a fair bit of play, as you'll see later on in the video. If you just spread it out nice and easy, there's not a great deal to it. If you make a mistake, just, just wipe it off with your finger and start again. It's really easy. As you can see in this video, I'm using a plastic knife. Um, I also use plastic cups. I do reuse them, but when I finish with them, they go in the recycling for any of you out there that are quite partial to that. So it's just simply a case of spreading the filler out, making sure you've got a good fall. Don't worry too much about getting it too neat at this stage. Just get the, the, the shape that's the critical thing, making sure the shape's okay. I'm also going to spread a bit over this top section here in this corner. Uh, I want this to be substantially higher than its surrounding areas. Uh, the, these two little particular places that I've raised up are going to be the positions of the trees. And trees, as a general rule, do tend to sort of lift on their own root system. So you get a dome, a natural dome underneath a tree. Um, so but this is basically what I'm trying to replicate here now. Again, don't worry about getting it absolutely perfectly smooth in the initial application. Um, the, the basic method to this is to allow it to dry off a reasonable amount and then it becomes malleable and you can actually smoothen it off with your finger to get the required finish. Right, we're going to go to the trees now. Uh, these are Luke Towen's trees. I'm going to put a link in the description to them. He made them. He makes them miles better than me. It's basically a uh, wire that's been twisted together. We then get uh, some latex compound and just paint it over the wire and then paint them brown. That gives you the perfect armature to start working from. And then when you've got the armature, you can put the foliage on. So I'll take you through very briefly how we, how we can, how we attach the foliage because that's the important bit once you've made the armatures I do the foliage slightly different to him so I think I'm using a no nonsense contact spray adhesive any spray adhesive will do but this one's from Screwfix relatively cheap seems to doesn't do the job uh, don't do this make sure you spray it into the paper first otherwise it just goes everywhere there is a reason for the paper on the uh, table by the way you just give it a light spray uh, trying to get it on the armatures rather than on the actual foliage itself and then you just get clumps of foliage and don't do that you actually press it onto the model itself um, and build it up in layers you just once you've done this you spray it again put a bit more on and you just keep going until your tree looks right this is what we're using which is clump foliage by Woodland Scenics light green uh, any colour you want mixture of colours just pull it all out chop it up into little bits big bits once you've finished, if you look at uh, your, your finished tree, you'll probably see what are like spider legs from the spray glue. If you just go in like I'm using a screwdriver, just pick any bits out, anything that's not stuck properly, anything that doesn't look right, just basically clean it up. And when you're done, that's what the paper's for. I have a nice clean tape. Right. 
I'm back to the boards. Uh, the time I've spent doing messing about with them trees, uh, this has managed to set off to a point now where it can be smoothed. And just using your finger really, because none of this texture is going to be on the surface to see anyway. So it's just a case of running your finger backwards and forwards, uh, manipulating what's underneath and getting a really good smooth finish. Uh, this corner bit here, as you can see, just feather it out, just dragging it out with my finger, running it across, just keep going over and over and over, and eventually you get it pretty smooth. It's about as good as it gets, to be fair. And now it's time for the track. Uh, now, depending on how you've built your board, depends on how your track's going to be, whether it's going to be a straight piece like mine, or whether you're going to have a curve in it, it's totally up to you. In this particular case, we're going to go for a straight line. Now, the easiest way to get a straight line with a piece of track, especially this flexi track stuff, which is cold seven, uh, cold 100 uh, peacock, by the way, is using a straight edge. Now, this is a cutting ruler. Um, you just basically rest it on top of the uh, sleepers, on top of the chairs, it doesn't matter which way you do it, and put the edge of the ruler up against the track. And then any slight undulations you can gently feed out. Now I'm using super glue just to temporarily tack the track into position. I'm going to fix it firmly when I do the ballasting later on. But it's a fairly straightforward procedure to get straight lines if you really want them. Now, whilst the polyfiller is still wet, it's a very, very good time right now to press your trees into place. Just put them exactly where you want them. You don't want them too close to the railway line, they'll hit the carriages. You don't want them too far back, they're hanging off the back of the board. In this particular case, I've gone right down the middle. Now I'm firmly pressing the roots into the polyfiller. Now there's two different ways of doing this. You can either A, large blob of PVA underneath the tree, sit the tree on top, cover up a few of the roots, or B, place the tree down onto the polyfiller, push it hard, and then polyfiller over the roots using the roots to bond the tree to the board. Now I've gone for B. I'm just going to cover the roots up completely. I'm leaving one or two just a little bit showing. Um, depends what your ultimate finish is and what you want. So now the next stage is to reapply a little bit more filler, just covering over the roots. Again, don't be too arty with it. You know, it, just slap it on, let it set off a little bit, maneuver it round the usual. The same principle as what we've done the first time round. Don't worry too much about getting it on the tree because it's polyfiller, so it just wipes off. It, it, don't get too much on, obviously. If you get li a little bit too much on, use a, like a, an electronic screwdriver and just gently feed the stuff away from the tree and then just keep applying. Now, given roughly the same amount of time that the first course of filler had, Allow this to dry off and then do the same thing again. Just gently with your finger, going round, smoothing it off, blending it into the original underneath so you can't really tell. At this point, you can sort of manipulate it into like ripples and waves as if it's like partly eroded. It's up to you how you want to do it. In this case, I've just gone completely smooth because of the finish that I'm applying to it. It depends how you want to do it. So it's just very gently passing your finger over the top pressing down with a little bit of pressure and just let your finger glide and as you can see it makes a massive difference. The whole point behind this is to provide a, a little bit of an embankment, a little bit of a raised area and it just takes the blandness off a very flat board. Again I've gone for three trees, two lumps. It's your board, you do what you want with it, you know, you, this is your time to be creative. And there we have it. It's, uh, whilst we let that dry, I think we move on to the next thing now. And that's time for trap ballasting. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of videos out there on ballasting track. Um, some of you who are watching this are far more experienced than me. I, I am only still a reasonable novice. But this is my method of... Uh, applying ballast to a, a piece of track. So first of all, sprinkle out rough, you know, a rough amount, and then I'm using a long, long bristled, very soft brush to gently tease the, 
the ballast into the sleepers. Any excess ballast you just gently push down the track and fill in the next set of sleepers and keep going and going and going until you can just start to see the top of the sleepers and all the chairs are reasonably clear. It isn't essential to make sure that every single nook and crevice is filled at this point. It's just a case if you just want to make sure that there's a, a reasonable load. Just gently running the brush along the side of the chairs on the outside of the rail usually settles the ballast into the sleepers okay. And again you can go over it from above. Any large lumps of standing ballast, just keep pushing them down and they will fill the gaps. Now, here's the trick. With the handle of the brush, just gently tap the track and the ballast will automatically sink and fill any spaces that haven't got any ballast in. Anything that sticks up higher than the sleepers is excess ballast and it just gently tees it down the track whilst keep tapping every now and again and everything will settle into place. Uh, keep an eye on the shoulders, make sure they don't fall out of line. Uh, I need some more ballast at the top end of this layout there, but uh, right now, just concentrating on getting the centre section done. Um, just keep pushing it down, it's really straightforward. Again, tap of the uh, brush, the ballast settles into the holes. It's, it's really straightforward. You can buy machines that do it, and I, I, I've been on an hour and over getting one, but to be fair, I actually quite like doing this. It's quite therapeutic, in a way, I suppose. Monotonous, yes, but yeah, therapeutic. Uh, <coughs> now, I could continue this video for the next 20 or 30 minutes it took me to do the whole piece properly. Or alternatively, we could just go into high speed. And now for gluing down the ballast. Um, I'm going to be using a mixture of PVA and water to do this, which I'm going to let down to approximately 60-40 on the water side. It's a little more than most people usually do 50-50, but I tend to find this is easier for me. 
Um, the PVA that we're actually going to be using is Tacky Glue. I got this from my local range store. It was relatively cheap and it does the job absolutely perfectly. Pretty much any PVA will do. Now, in order to get this PVA to work properly, we need to add a couple of drops of washing up liquid. Now, what this serves to do is break the surface tension of the water. If you don't do this, when you apply the glue and water solution to the, to the ballast, it will clump up in, in lumps and then start to move the ballast around as it soaks in. This is not what you want when you've spent ages getting it just right. Uh, in, in order to aid this even better, we pre-spray all the ballast with a very fine mist of isopropic alcohol. What this serves to do is to already wet down the ballast and helps to keep it in place whilst we apply the liquid. Uh, water onto water with a surface tension breaker is the best way. It is by far the best way. Um, in order to apply it, what I'm using is like, it's like a plastic tub sealed with a little hole in the end. Available from like you know Hobbycraft, eBay, plenty of places. You just squeeze it and then suck up the PVA water solution. Uh, there's no real method to actually applying it to the track you've just got to make sure it's absolutely soaked through as you can see pre-soaking it with uh, isopropic alcohol and the ad addition of the washing up liquid it's just soaking straight in and going straight through now i want to add on uh, at this point before when i put the track down you saw me secure it in place with super glue now i only used a couple of spots here and there just in case i decided to lift the track and just make a, a, a slight tweak to it now by gluing down the ballast, we are now effectively gluing down the track. I don't see the point in using trap pins or deforming the track in any way, shape or form. When you put this PVA solution on, you are gluing the ballast to each other and to the cork and to the track, which will effectively glue the whole thing into one solid lump of PVA. It's going nowhere. This is probably, in my view, the quickest, easiest and best method of laying track. Now I'm also going to add this uh, small shed. Now this came, I think, with a signal box kit, a Metcalf kit. I made it up. I have no use for it on the layout. It's been knocking around my box. It would go perfect on here. So I thought, yeah, why not? So stick it down with a bit of super glue, and then do the same thing again. I've just run some ballast around the outside of it, got it all nice and neat using that soft brush, and I'm going to glue it down using the same method as I've glued everything else down. Uh, it's a mixture of 60-40 uh, PVA. You can be, basically, it's whatever you're, you're, you want on your diorama. In, in this particular case, I'm going to build a little bit of a scene at the end here, um, a halt with a signal and a few, you know, uh, P-way uh, workers knocking around. And... and now it's time for applying some ground cover. Uh, along the very edge of the board here, uh, we need some rough ground cover just to cover the cork. So first of all, we wet it down with a bit of isopropic alcohol. Then we apply the same glue mixture I've been using. I will be using throughout this. And then you get little pinches of the very fine woodland sea in its ground cover. And just gently spread them over the gap. Now, I'm also going to allow a little bit of this to drift onto the ballast so that we don't have that perfect line. This is supposed to be an oldish branch line piece of track. Um, so it would be in no way in perfect condition. I'd also like to add at this point as well, um, when you do get your ballast all laid out and you're brushing it down, some people like to clean the sleepers completely and have no ballast on the sleepers whatsoever and they will painstakingly sit there and pick every piece off. Now in the real world, for me, it just doesn't work that. You look at any piece of track, uh, I can tell you now that the majority of Network Rails P-Way workers don't sit there removing each piece of stone. And also as the trains pass, they will vibrate bits of stone up onto the sleepers. So I tend to like leave mine looking reasonably rough and I think it adds that little extra element of realism. So as you can see, I've spread out the ground cover. I'm now gently pressing it down into the PVA. Um, I'm going to go over this again with another coat of PVA and water just to make sure that it is absolutely soaked through. Uh, I want this to stick. This is the, the shield cover from the cork, so you can't see the cork basically.
now it's time to add a little bit of greenery. Now we're going to go back to using the same stuff that we use for the trees, um, just cut into reasonable sized lumps and chunks. Uh, I'm applying a fairly large blob of tacky glue and basically just gently pressing um, the foliage into the tacky glue. Um, that's all that's really needed, to be honest. I'm now changing to some uh, finer, lighter green, loose foliage, which I'm now going to apply over the top. This is like, it's, it's in between the stuff we use for the trees and the ground cover, um, just to add that extra little bit of texture. And again, we just spread it out and then apply a little bit of PVA over the top to stick it down. Now earlier on before I did the scenics for the back of the layout, um, I also put together the fencing um, just so I knew roughly what I was doing and where everything was going. Uh, fencing, you've just got to play with it. You've just got to get it the way you want it. It's quite, it's, it's almost impossible to describe how to actually do it, but you just, I've pre-painted all the fence panels. This is stuff left over from the main layout to be fair. Um, pre-painted it all and I know I'm just like gluing it all together I've got two gates to fit, one for access to the little shed and also I'm going to be building a crossing uh, at the other end of the board so I have to put a little gate in there so it's just a case if you just keep playing with it, get it right, uh, glue it all together and then just a couple of spots of super glue underneath the actual uh, fence in itself to pin it down. I haven't pinned it down at this point, I'm just building the full piece. You, you might want to do it a different way though, it's up to you.
And this is the little crossing piece I was talking about that's further up on the board. I've basically used a little bit of ballast to create a, a rough stone path, which I'll be detailing in part two. Um, and I've added a gate. And I've also added a bit of scenics and some bushes, as we did in the previous section. So, basically all that's left to do now is just to touch up the ground cover around the tree area and up against the fencing and add um, some bushes that are growing uh, quite wild along the railway line along the fencing. Add some detail uh, around the, the base of the trees. Some, I've got some fallen leaves which are like a, a yellow and a, a pinky colour. Um, they look pretty good as if like, you know, the, the dying leaves. And I've put a few of them dotted around all over the place and a bit under the trees. It's just basically whatever scenic colours you want to use depending on the season. It's, it's, it's basically down to your choice. Um, and that pretty much concludes building uh, the diorama, part one. And that concludes uh, part one of building this diorama. We've managed to get through quite a bit on the scenics. We've got through the track laying, the ballasting, and tree building. We've done quite a bit in this, and I'm quite happy that we've got this far. Uh, the only problem is it looks a bit clean and new and shiny. So uh, please do join me in part two, which will include wiring the track up, adding some light into the uh, diorama, and uh, a few other little bits of uh, tweaking that I need to do to the paint most importantly which is going to be weathering the track so don't forget like subscribe and uh, join me next time